Talking with the experts. In episode 559 with Didi Kai, discover strategies to attract the right clients, boost confidence and create financial freedom. So it's time to really look at some of the habits that we're having, especially as an entrepreneur. And if you're not already successful to where at the level that you want to be, it's time to change, right? Um, and so, yes, I would do that. Um, really look at the evening routine and see how that goes. And then really making sure that you're going to sleep relatively at the same time within the hour. So for example, if you're going down eight to nine, then usually stay around there because our system is really intelligent, right? You mentioned fire or flight, that's our nervous system. So if we are putting ourselves to bed at the same time, every single day, then we're really resetting the clock and getting our system, our chemicals to work normally. So then there's not going to be that many hormones. Just so you know that if you have a rhythm, even your body has a rhythm, right? Like that's why, why is the baby goes down almost every time, every day, and then it gets up at a certain time, things like that. We all have a circadian rhythm. That- Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking With The Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Talking With The Experts is all about business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today is my very special privilege to introduce you to Didi Kai. And Didi is um, going to be talking to us about Charge Your Worth to Amplify Your Impact. And Didi is the founder and mindset coach of Fit to Profit, a company that utilizes psychology, cognitive science, holistic wellness, and business to help entrepreneurs get mentally fit to obtain peak level of performance in their businesses. So she's got 15 years of experience in running her own business. Uh, and uh, she is a married her love of living an optimal lifestyle and business to create fit for profit or fit to profit, I beg your pardon. Didi, welcome to Talking with the Experts. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much, Rose, for the kind introduction. And yes, I'm delighted and honored to be here today for the conversation. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we're going to explore why changing what you're truly worth is essential for making a bigger impact in the world. So To start off, why did you choose this particular topic and what led you to it? Yes. So I believe for myself, and I speak for myself and many of the other entrepreneurs I've worked with, we each and every one of us started our business not with the intention just to make a living. Um, I know that there is a special calling for all of us. And um, besides really supporting ourselves, and we're out to make a difference as well, right? Like creating that impact. And first and foremost, at least that has been my experience so far with uh, the many years um, being in business. And um, why I say that specifically around the idea of, um, you know, charging your worth is in my personal journey and my fit to profit business has evolved throughout the years. Um, was exactly that, right? At the beginning, when I had my first work experience, that didn't pan out very well in corporate, which is which was short lived for six months, and then I start my brick and mortar businesses, etc. Um, the way I felt about, my, about myself was very different. Um, then I finally, third time is a charm, uh, in twenty fifteen really decided, um, and of course answering my calling of supporting others. Um, who are going through just really challenges in life in general um, to find their purpose and passion, uh, I discovered that I felt differently about myself this third time around 
And because of that, I have been able to charge more for my services, feel pride and confident in what it is I have to offer. And in that return was that I'm making more money and I'm creating a bigger impact. But it truly starts with working on myself from the inside out, right? Like really developing a strong mindset, the discipline, um, all of the things that take someone from zero to successful. And so that is truly the reason why I'm, I'm sharing on this topic today, because it is not a conversation that many people talk about. A lot of people talk about strategy and the best technology or, you know, uh, the shiny objects. But I truly believe that for a successful entrepreneur to be thriving, and I mean sustainable for long term, is that she has to take care of herself from the inside out and really build herself up from the inside out. And it starts with just really knowing that she is worthy, you know, to be successful. And that's always can, can be difficult. Um, you know, we're often told as as young children, as teenagers, that we're not worthy of something. So, you know, I mean, I don't believe in those sporting events where children get a a a, um, a trophy for just participation. I think you need to earn that that particular trophy um, because you know, it, it if you even if you come in last. You know, you've participated, but you haven't, you know, reached that pinnacle that you wanted to, you know, when you're coming in first or second or third. Um, uh, you know, that that's a controversial way of thinking about things. But I think, you know, knowing your own worth and 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 finding that because as we, you know, you're often told that you're not worthy, you know, all through your growing up um, period of life. And so having to try and find that worthiness as an adult, it can be, you know, challenging. Yes, absolutely. So I think what's really interesting is that, um, like you said, right, like our parents did the best, our caregivers did their best. It's ultimately, I feel like that is an internal work that is required from everyone, especially we're easily distracted from, you know, to the society, all of everything that's happening, all the technology, um, and I think that's why we're most of most entrepreneurs are not feeling that fulfillment just because there's a disconnection, right? Like between how she feels about herself and what she is really doing. And there's no really true reason why, you know, the sacrifice or why, you know, the obligation or why the, the, the action plan to, to begin with. I think that alignment needs to happen. Um, for someone to be, I, I really believe that to be truly successful and fulfilled. Yeah, absolutely, and I think you know, um, finding that self worth is is really really important. And um, you know, whether you go to a therapist or a counselor, or you'll have a, a business coach or a or a, a life coach, um, those feelings of self worth are really important moving forward in your business. Because as you quite rightly pointed out, if you don't have those feelings of self-worth, then you're not going to find that success that you deserve. Yes, absolutely. So I would say as tangible, right, I want to always share practical experiences that I've had where I had that revelation. And for example, with just simple as having a conversation with a prospective client. And if you're coming into the conversation with feeling worthy of your own success, the way you show up, the conversation that you're conducting and the way that you're really connecting with your potential client is very different, right? Then you're having a conversation just to close the sale, right? Like the connection between having a real conversation versus just trying to close the sale. Um, I know for me it was day and night um, when I really understand that, wow, if the person is the right fit client, I don't have to do the convincing, right? I don't have to, uh, you know, use the tactics, which makes me feel salesy, et cetera, and things like that. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so those sales calls became much easier. It's just truly a conversation to make sure that I can actually have uh, a solution for, for the potential client. And that's one thing. And then secondly, uh, as entrepreneurs, it's super lonely. I know I can relate to most of us who are virtual. 
I know that I have to do a good job staying in communication and or a community. And if I didn't feel like I deserve to be supported, again, I would not be reaching out to people or put myself in a community where I'm going to be receiving what I need to be successful. So those are just a couple of um, areas where uh, feeling worthy is super important because it's not only in the expression um, of your business, but also in the connection of you with other re other people, uh, other relationships too, right? This, I'm just talking professional, but also it's also personal as well, could be. Um, you know, uh, ways that, you know, we self-sabotage ourselves. And, you know, so what are some maybe practical strategies that we can overcome those challenges? Yes, I love that you asked that question. And my answer is probably not what everyone thinks. And or maybe some of you might be like, oh, I'm not surprised. But what's really interesting is not everybody's doing it. <laughs> and hence why we're, we're in a place uh, that we are. And most of my, what I've seen so far with my clients is that they're always chasing that shiny object. What's the next strategy? What's the next thing? But the truth is to really build self-worth and feeling worthy and confident is truly having a system, right? And building a system around having methods to take care of yourself. It's ultimately self-care. And I mean, that is from the very foundational standpoint of getting enough sleep, exercising, uh, having quiet time, allowing yourself to have strategy time to work on your business just as much as you are working in your business. Um, it's truly self-care and being uh, setting really good boundaries around doing that. Um, I know I business didn't really take off until I really truly prioritized myself. And honestly, fit to profit is built on that. Uh, is that seeing so many clients struggle with the inconsistent revenue or the uh, stagnation? Was I realized that they she was not taking care of herself? Right? Imagine the quality of work that you put out in the world with lack of sleep you're not clear-minded, you're not focused, you're not energetic, et cetera, right? Like it's so practical, but not a lot of us are aware of that. So having a true system to take care of yourself, support yourself on all levels at Fit to Profit, we believe that everything is holistic. So physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, last but not least, the financial piece comes in when the other four is taken care of. It's really important to have all these things aligned and, and you wrote, Sleep is one of the most important things. Uh, you know, your brain can't function, your body's not functioning to its optimum level. So, um, you know, sleep is a huge, huge benefit to to all of us. But sometimes we, you know, we we overthink things, and we and so we, you know, we're dreaming about stuff that may happen and most likely won't. But you know, our, our brains, you know, just go into this fight or flight mode and obviously you're not sleeping well how can we you know find that better sleep strategy yeah so for for better sleep it, it can be definitely many factors right you mentioned you know fight or flight that means your system is at stress right and so i i would say first and foremost just start with looking at what you're doing before you're going to sleep like, I mean, it's like, do, is there a just a simple routine? For me, it's drinking a cup of tea. Like my system knows when I'm taking my first sip of tea, okay, we're going to sleep. And then, you know, dimming the lights, whatever it may be. But I would look and reflect to what do you have in terms of, remember I use the word system is, do you have a routine for evening? Do you have a routine in the morning? Like literally we're doing this conversation at 5 a.m. in the morning, my time. But I woke up at 4.30 in the morning because I know that I needed time to ground down. I have my non-negotiables, right? So my four Fs, which is faith, fitness, family, and then fulfillment. And so I encourage for you to take a look at what, what are your normal rhythm or habits or routine? How are you putting yourself into, uh, you know, 
that that uh, phase where okay this is when I'm getting ready for bed right that's that's the first thing and then you get to start looking at I want to start small with everyone I did that too so start with that then you say what can I incorporate to that right and honestly most of us are guilty with this we're on our phone up into the last minute most of us sleep with our phones you know literally underneath our pillow so it's time to really look at some of the habits that we're having especially as an entrepreneur. And if you're not already successful to where at the level that you want to be, it's time to change, right? It's time to shift some things around. Um, and so, yes, I would do that. Um, really look at the evening routine and see how that goes. And then really making sure that you're going to sleep relatively at the same time within the hour. So for example, if you're going down eight to nine, then usually stay around there because our system is really intelligent, right? You mentioned fire or flight, that's our nervous system. So if we are putting ourselves to bed at the same time every single day, then we're really resetting the clock and getting our system, our chemicals to work normally. So then there's not going to be that many hormones. I have a cognitive psychology background, so I can go deep with this stuff. But just so you know, that if you have a rhythm, even your body has a rhythm, right? Like that's why, why the baby goes down almost every time, every day, and then it gets up at a certain time, things like that. We all have a circadian rhythm that we, we follow. So I would say, start simple, right? Like looking at your evening routine, can you go to bed at the same time almost every day? And most importantly, how much sleep are you getting is usually required, depends on the person, anywhere between six to eight hours of sleep and that quality sleep. But let's just start with just a number, right? Like, are you doing six to eight, at least on a, on a nightly basis? Quality sleep is really important. I've, I've found that myself, that if I'm not getting good quality REM sleep, that I'm you know, I'm a mess the next day and I can't function. I can't think my body aches because I have fibromyalgia. So my body um, is, is in more pain than, than is usual. Um, and so, yeah, good quality sleep is really important and that REM sleep, especially. And if you're not getting the, the uh, adequate amount of REM sleep, then yeah, it's not doing you any, any favors. Yes. And what's really crazy is that just as much, I just want to really call this out. It's like just as much as we are not giving ourselves enough sleep or we do or doing it, it compounds. Like if it's mm. you have enough sleep, you're going to get clearer and healthier each day as you do that. And say the opposite happens when you're not sleeping, it compounds and you get more tired. And if you're one of those that's constantly tired, well, your body is trying to catch up. So mm really consider that like and and you just need to do it little step at a time it started with one night sleep and then the next night sleep and the next night sleep just one night at a time yeah absolutely and you know I find sometimes that I've I even have to have a nap during the day because my body is is just telling me that you know I I just can't function anymore that and you know I just feel really drawn and tired and and just can't function so you know really just go and have a you know a sleep in the afternoons it only has to be a quick sleep sometimes you know 20 minutes is enough I had one this afternoon it ended up being two and a half hours I didn't realize I was that actually that tired so um but I feel a lot better for it you know you can't mm -hmm. catch up on your sleep but that extra sleep that you're missing out on can be quite helpful yes absolutely yeah, definitely in my my experience. And it took time, you know, for, for me to really get there. And yeah, it's a it's it's a non-negotiable. It should be a non-negotiable for you to prioritize your sleep. Absolutely. Now how we're getting back now to self-worth and and you know following our dreams and and you know deserving to to uh to reach our goals and, and aspirations, but you know, how can we um start changing our mindset to actually charge what we are worth, um, you know, to our clients, because a lot of us start off thinking, you know, I'll just have a $27 course. And, and then when you put your price up, you think, because, you know, you put adding things to it, but, you know, should we start really low first? Cause there is a bit of, um, you know, um, not controversy, um, uh, different uh, um, areas of opinion that should you start, should you start low or should you start high? 
and but I do know never lower your prices once they're at at the at the high end. It's that's yeah. I know that for sure. But how do we know what we should be charging? You know, what is our worth? Yes. Oh no, I love love the the question so much because here here's my answer. It really starts with you. <laughs> and I say that because Here's what happened when I first graduated to be a holistic health coach. I was told to charge a certain rate as a quote unquote new coach. But for whatever reason, this is much early on. This is 2015 when I first launched. It just didn't feel right for me just because I was a new coach in the new coaching industry. I felt like I had so much more experience. I had my businesses that I ran, I have worked and I have managed people before, you know, I feel like I have so much live experience all in conjunction with that. So that's why I say it comes back down to you of really, do you feel like that particular price is right for you? That's why I said, it's important to know your worth and be in alignment with that. So the first thing I would always ask, how do you feel about that price? Now, when I when you ask yourself that question, whether it's twenty seven dollars, you know, twenty seven thousand dollars, how do you feel about charging that price? Do you, it's not because someone told you to do that, but how do you feel about that price? Right? Is it of value? And when I think a lot of times when we first start out, it's really hard to see our own value, and I get that. But I want you to really think about what is the results that you're actually creating for this person with this product or solution. And it's beyond just that transaction, right? Especially if you're a coach or consultant of some sort, you're teaching a skill. And that skill, if it's applied, it's actually priceless, right? Because you're actually giving them a solution that they didn't know before. So it's always going to be more than what you think. And it's going to be so much more as you gain more experience doing it. But I would always start, especially for us women entrepreneurs, I would say, choose a number that you feel that is right for you and add or add at least 50% or double it because that's when it's a little stretchy and a little uncomfortable. We always should be working and increasing our next level of worth. And to do that is how we can price our, our services. Um, I know there's so many uh, elements that I've given here in, in deciding uh, a price, but ultimately it comes down to what do you think? It's not, I don't care. I mean, based, again, you heard my story. I didn't care about what someone told me. And I went and charged five times that. And I was living in Columbus, Ohio at the time, and the annual salary was $42,000 back in 2015. And the rate I charged was actually almost close to what people were paying for their mortgage on a monthly basis for my coaching fee, right? That, and that was five times what I was told, right? And I decided to my first three clients within two weeks. So I share that story to say that it wasn't my actual service, how committed I was with the value that I get to provide for my client. And I chose a number that was right for me and it was a little stretchy. Like I could have three, three X it and be really comfortable, but I added, you know, two more X. So it's like, it was five times what I was told to charge. And that's how, I mean, that's how I would start. Really, you're, it's a win-win because when you are charging more, here's a, here's a kicker. When you're charging more for a client, you are requiring more of yourself to show up for the client. So therefore, the person's get it's just psychological. Like it's it's weird, but it's psychological. And the person, when the person pays more, the person automatically, right, show up even more. And so that is a you creating a win-win environment for both you and the client, trusting that they're going to do the work. Your your work is valuable and together you are a team. So that's what I have to say about where to start with charging your worth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I've got a, a podcast course at the moment going, 
it's only a 97 Australian dollars. I was happy with that figure. But, you know, the time it took to actually create that course, the hours and, and the resources and the research and everything that's gone into it, you know, it really should be heaps more expensive than that, you know, in, in the thousands. But, you know, I felt comfortable with that $97 to, to begin with. But, you know, I, you know, I won't be able to sustain that that price because um, people will expect you to turn up, as you say, more often um, the higher price that you charge. Um, and you know, they just sort of expect more than what, um, I guess, what you, you can be comfortable with giving, um, you know, especially if it's a, if it's a you know, do-it-yourself sort of a, a, a thing, but they still expect you to show up in some form or other. So I think if you're charging a lower price, their expectation is a lot less about, you know, what they're going to get out of it. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I think it really depends on on the the promised results, right? Like what you are promising them. Um, honestly, you're always going to have people, especially with courses and such. Like, I mean, it's as just normally in the market in the industry that you know usually only you know ten to fifteen percent of people actually finish a course. You know mm. what I mean? Like, and so it really depends. And again, it comes down to what is the promise solution that you're you're providing them and um to be honest like I, you may have the anomalies right of those people who are really showing up and again um the price point ultimately is is not um as important i feel like uh for for someone just starting out but it's really what works for you like you said I mean if you're staying at a certain rate you're not going to be able to sustain yourself so then you know you wouldn't have a business to begin with and then you wouldn't be able to make the difference that you want to make so it has to be right right like you can start anywhere to be to be honest but at the same time you have to check in with yourself you know, uh, emotionally to see if can you really invest in would only this rate and keep increasing it. I would say definitely, you know, give yourself a, a, a pay rate more often than you think. Like, honestly, I teach my clients to raise their rates every, if they are doing one-on-one, -on -one, is to raise their rates every four to six clients, you know, and if it's like a course, um, perhaps raise your rates every other launch, you know, really depends on, you know, where you are and your intention with it and what what is the solution. But based on my experience, people who are investing more, I mean, uh, most people I've been paid like close to uh, $50,000 just to be in the program. And honestly, those people are, we don't expect much because we already know that we have to do the work and it's all about implementation. Like it's very little time when it comes to their teaching a strategy. It's like, here you go, you go do this thing, right? So I would challenge you on the belief that if people are paying less, they have less expectation. If they're paying more, they're expecting more of you. Again, it's a solution, right? It's a, it's, it's a result that you're promising them more so than the actual thing, if that makes sense. Well, you know that that's a good point, and you know, um, you know, but you have to look at market value as well. You know, what are the other um people in your industry charging? And you know, you don't want to price yourself out of out of the market at all. So you know, is price comparison a way to go as well? You know, does that have something to do with what you charge for your services? I think it's a good baseline. Like I said, I did that too, right? Like when I was told I like, charge this rate, I'm like, really? that's not possible and then i went and did the market research and things things too just it's good to get a basis of where you should be but at the same time if it doesn't feel right to you and if you feel like your work is more valuable than that i wouldn't i wouldn't bother with it like i said like that and i can only speak from my experience like i have clients who literally started out charging three hundred dollars you know a, a month for their services by the within like uh, eight months, they were charging $2,000 a month. So it's that level of self-worth, it's that level of commitment. It depends on, you know, how far, you know, you want to go with that. So it's a good idea to have an idea of what you should charge, but it should never be, that's the number you should charge at that. Yeah, no, no, it makes ask. total sense. Makes total sense. Now, Didi, you um, can be found 
almost everywhere. You're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn, uh, your website, fittoprofit.com. Uh, you've got a group which is called Fit to Profit. You're on Instagram. You've got a YouTube channel and you've got a podcast. Tell me a little bit about the Fear Factor podcast. Yeah, the Fear Factor podcast was uh, created uh, based on my book, The Overcomer, How to Overcome Fear to Achieve Your Goals. So that was a complimentary to that. Um, the podcast I'm looking to relaunch next year. But yes, there's like a previous episode that you can definitely listen to. It's all about uh, strategies or of how to overcome mental barriers and things that you can actually apply to get yourself moving forward and staying in implementation. Um, so yeah, that, and this is a, a glance of the book, The Overcomer. Love the cover. Uh, yes, thank you. That's that's me right there. Um, so it's on Amazon if you guys are interested. Um, but yes, uh, I really truly believe that um, if each and every one of us is uh, willing to invest in ourselves, build our self worth, that is truly how we create more impact. Because if you can think about it. If we can help more people, we get to create more impact. So wonderful. Thank you. You've been uh, enjoying the 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 knowledge of Didi Kai today. Thank you, Didi, for joining us today. And uh, I look forward to talking with you again in in sometime in the future. Yes, thank you so much, Rose, and fantastic um, conversation so far. Again, thank you for all you do, uh, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. Bye bye for now. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.